Dave, welcome to uh, Land Grant Trophy Week here on the Blue White Breakdown. Always a big week for Penn State's program and Michigan State's program. At least it's not going to be a weather game Friday night, Ford Field. Uh, so, so we have that going for us. And it's lovely in Detroit that time yeah. of year. So it's too I bad love- it has to be inside. <laughs> yeah. The game two years ago, uh, we drove in. It was a sleet storm. <laughs> it's like it's a legit almost 90 minutes and the way that the traffic was it was pretty rough so do you remember what was the super bowl year with the, the bengals and the 49ers in 81 it was like 50 below and it was an ice storm yeah, yeah it was like it was like 10 degrees but still it was liquid precipitation somehow and people are walking over this overpass and it's just miserable it's people slipping all over the place bill walsh's first super bowl win also a young chris collinsworth led the bengals attack they fell way behind and that took a great goal line stand by the niners in the second half really really to probably to probably win that game wasn't that the first know that wasn't that the first cold weather super bowl right uh i think it was yeah i think it was i mean it got they used to have it out like two before the superdome it got a little chilly in new orleans but nothing like that no i mean there were the the two lane stadium games i guess that's where Dallas yeah. won their uh, first yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, it's some a little bit of strange weather, but not cold. Yeah, um, I don't. I this is the cool part about the college football playoff is I don't think people can quite grasp how much fun it's going to be to have these southern teams <laughs> coming up into the north and having to play up there in December. It's yeah. never happened before. Bowl games. Unless you count like the the pinstripe bowl, or yeah, uh, what the, the Liberty Bowl, but that's not really in the North. I yeah, mean, there's been some awful Liberty Bowl weather, like ice storms yeah. there, and the one Cotton Bowl with uh, Joe From Montana, Montana yeah. against the Houston Cougars. Also, was- I think if uh, if USC ever gets its act together, if they have to play in a cold weather playoff game, that should be funny too. Yeah, but but it's always been the other way around yeah. bowl games always are in beautiful sunny venues and the northern team always has to be essentially the away team yeah but that's not necessarily going to happen it's whoever the higher seed is which is going to be cool starting yeah. next year unfortunately for the nittany lions or they would be in the game right now they would they would be a road team but they would be yeah. in the game Dave, one of the things this Thanksgiving that I'm most thankful for is the end of the, end of the Big Ten West. And I am dead serious. <laughs> I cannot take it anymore. I need to go away. It's awful. They should all they should all be relegated out. All you, know, you know what's great now, about it is I, I have to watch all this stuff so you don't have to for the power poll. I watched and, the end of that Illinois uh, Iowa game, and that yeah, was horrifying. Yeah. And, and- <laughs> Even the scores are great. 15 to 13, 12 to 10. They're all excited They're, when they pull it out. I know. And then Kirk Ferentz is so proud afterward yeah. in the in the post-game press conference. Yeah. He cries sometimes. He scores. When they lose by 68 in the Big Ten title game, we'll see. I want to see that big smile on his face after that. <laughs> and they've never won one. The West has never won one and usually haven't been close. They haven't even been close, have they? I mean, the, the North- Iowa, the Iowa Michigan State uh, Big Ten title game, the year that Ohio yeah. State yeah. lost, that and was North- probably the closest. Northwestern kept one close against Ohio State one year for like three quarters out of nowhere yeah. somehow, and but it well, didn't feel close. Yeah, I got it. Hey, Dave, yeah. any any? Uh, I don't have any like super super duper thoughts on Penn State uh, at Michigan State. I I did kind of. It, it just, I don't know, Dave. I just think that Bo Prabula, who can certainly play at a high level for a good program, I just don't know if, if Drew, as long as Drew Aller is healthy, I don't know that James, you know how he handles his quarterbacks. I don't, I don't know what James is going to do with Bo. And I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think he should do something to, to get this guy more involved. But I don't know, I don't know how this is going to play out, man. Don't you think he's already decided who he wants to keep? Yes, he does. He does. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's gonna I be don't true. usually get involved in the midweek, the Monday, the Tuesday, now Monday yeah. um, press conference. Uh, it's for beat people, unless I have a reason to get on there, a real reason, like uh, 
yeah. maybe a, an evacuation to some other uh, coaching place search, that, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't get on him, but I do watch the video sometimes. And when I saw his answer about yeah. both Drew Aller and Nicholas Singleton, yeah. what 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 struck you about those answers? Is there anything? Because uh, well, yeah, what struck me, what me. struck me the, the the one I think they're I think they're 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 kind of the same in a way, but he is aware that these are both coveted five star kids, and he is going to do whatever it takes to keep them if he right. can, at That's Penn right. State. That's right. Even if they are not developing the way maybe they That's should, right. but he what he doesn't what I don't I think what James doesn't really want is. Bo Prabula to have success over a five star that did not, you know, pan out the way, you know, maybe a lot of people thought, because I think that reflects badly on the staff. Well, it's it's the same story. The as, it goes, man. You know what I mean? It, it, if, if the kid's good enough, he's got to play. Do you think he can throw the ball effectively? That is the question that I, I really hope, Dave, that it sounds to me, unless unless Drew has a issue in practice, he's going to start. But. I think there's a world where Michigan State goes quietly. I think there is. I know it's a, a national TV game and they're going to play hard, but if Penn State gets up, they ha I just want to see him throw the ball. I really do. Um, not in the final two minutes of the game, but maybe over the last three or four series of the right. game. You're, you're Just to make sure I think I understand you, you're not projecting into 2024 necessarily. You're just talking about this season, this game, and he's the most effective, the more effective quarterback with the material they have. He is because they don't have any good wideouts. Uh, you might as well go all in on 12 or even 13 personnel with Prabula and mash him to death because Michigan State is not necessarily a defense that can withstand that, even if you have no vertical threat. They're, they're four and seven for a reason. And they've got an interim coach. They don't even know who the coach is going to be. They're holding out hope for Urban Meyer, which I think is ludicrous. He he's he's going to get something better than that. And I don't think his wife Shelley wants to to spend uh, <laughs> any time in Lansing, uh, maybe the most depressing place in the Big Ten. It's, it's I've got there. lots of lots of friends there, but as far as weather and everything else, you know, she's it's been. Grim. In, it's grim. It's grim, and and. I don't think they have any hope of that. I wouldn't hire Urban Meyer anyway because right. he's a prick, but that's not what they're <laughs> thinking about. They're thinking about effectiveness. And um, anyway, they're, they're, they're in transition, but there is this. Um, Harlan Barnett, their, their, their interim coach, this is his last game. He, he's, he's not probably a head coach. He never asked for this job. Um, they haven't played great, right? but they played pretty well the last couple, three games. I mean, they, they beat Indiana at Indiana, their first road win. They beat Nebraska. Um, yeah. they didn't even play awfully. Well, they kind of did at Ohio state, but they've won two of three. They are, they like this guy and I think they want to thank him, yeah. the players, and right. I think they're going to play pretty hard, um, and they've got a they're they're they've got better talent than their record, which used to be the story of all Michigan State teams in the years of John L. Smith and a, a lot of <laughs> Bobby That's Williams. A two game at Beaver a, Stadium. A lot of a lot of coaches who probably should not have been head coaches, and they were talented, and you never knew when they were going to go off. The '98 game in Columbus, when Ohio State is number one in the nation and they went on in there with like a six and six team and upset them. Those are the things they, they've got, they've got guys, they've got a few guys, not a lot of guys, but uh, Kaiten Hauser, their, their young quarterback mm -hmm. has moments. Uh, Malik Carr, their big tight end. Have you seen this guy? Uh, I was just reading. I, I looked at, I was, when I did, I looked at how the Indiana game played out and I was reading some stuff on M live about just, you know, like you know, from an athletic standpoint, yeah. uh, he is he is all you want in a tight end. He's gonna be he's gonna get a long look in the NFL. He's six five, two fifty five, and fast. Yeah. Um, in another program, he could have been a star. Uh, in this program, it's dysfunctional, and he might have been a star under Mel Tucker or or, right. 
a previous couple of years and he just never really developed. But this is kind of a volatile situation. Am I going to pick Michigan State? No. But would I be shocked if they came out and and stunned Penn State in this sort of situation where Penn State's just playing out the string and really has no reason to play hard and their guys are um, – their, their, their prospective pros are looking at the NFL? No, I wouldn't be shocked because this team has, has some guys. <clears throat> they do. No, they do. Um, curious to see how it goes, but Penn, Penn State under Franklin, they usually – they use when they get when they when they get a team. I mean, I I know the Illinois game a couple of years ago was not that, but they're pretty good at roughing up teams that they're supposed to rough up. So we'll see. Yeah, if if nothing else, that's what Franklin's teams have done. They have yeah. finished these seasons against the bottom of the barrel. There's always Rutgers and Maryland and Michigan State near the end, and yeah, they always sure. take care of business. What are they? Are they perfect against those teams in the last three years? He's, well, yeah, I mean, he's never lost to Rutgers. Four. Um, they lost to Michigan State two years. They lost to Michigan State two years ago in the snow. That's right. They had Kenneth Walker. What a player he was. Yeah, I mean that was a different Michigan State Maybe team. Michigan. That was a, they, those guys went eleven and two and uh, went to the Peach Bowl. Speaking of the Peach Bowl, yeah, uh, Hot Atlanta. What do you think? Uh, have you? Have you, uh, you know have what? You? I, I think I, I'm all. I'm all about. Uh, you know, Atlanta. That works. Certainly, Dallas works. The Fiesta Bowl, I think that would be uh, played. Yeah, uh, we'll see. They got to take care of business. I just really want to see what this offense is going to look like, and also, you know, circling back to, I just wanted to get your take because you've 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 kind of seen it for a while too. Um, your take on what he said about Singleton. I I we talked about it, right? He's he he wants to keep the kid here, and he's going to encourage the kid. But the things that he, I just, you know, it's hard for me to buy. Uh, I, he, he was like a big picture. Oh, he's improved in the passing game and as a blocker. But is that really? Is that really why you recruited Singleton to come? No, he's, he's blowing flower petals off his butt, and and yeah. everyone knows that. I mean, are those worthy things to look at? Yes. Yeah. And for instance, Kyle Manongai yeah. is an overall great back. I don't know if he can be Isaiah Pacheco, another Rutgers back, because he's not that quick. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at Pacheco, he's just got boom. He's got that electric burst. And I don't know that Monongai is that. But when you watch him block and do all the little things, it's valuable and it means something. That's what James was saying about Singleton. That yeah. is valid. Right. But on the other hand, you didn't get him for yeah. that. You got, him to hit, you got him to hit home runs like he did at Auburn, like he did – at Utah against Utah, didn't he have one against in the Rose Bowl? I can't think. Yeah, eighty-seven um, yards. I think. Yeah, eighty-seven or eighty-eight uh, yards. That's what you get him for. But I don't think he's been used necessarily correctly in the offense. So the problem is, is he getting an NIL a suitor with big NIL money who believes we can use this guy in a different way? We'll make him a pitch, and that's the world we live in now. There, there's there, no one is married to anybody. And it's not even a divorce. It's just a, a, a trial separation and, and you're gone because yeah. all players are now free agents, which I think is great. It's the way it ought to be because they never were compensated before. And now they're, it's the highest bidder and that's the way it is. Yeah. Well, um, we will see how much Penn State really believes in, in Nicholas Singleton mm -hmm. beyond lip service. And if, if the coaching staff with whoever the new coordinator is, can convince him that we're going to use you in a different way. And my way would be if I was a suitor coming in from some other school, uh, and I think, I think he belongs in the Big 12, for instance. I think he'd be great in one of those offenses, always on the edge, always – he's a pretty good receiver, and James mentioned that. Why not run him in wheel routes or circle routes out on, out on the edge and downfield. He's got speed. Mm -hmm. He's not supposed to be a between-the-tackles guy. And I think if he goes to the NFL, he's not going to be that. So you sell him on that prospect. And I don't think he's been used correctly at all at Penn State. They're using him as interchangeable with Katron Allen. He's not. Yeah. He's not. And I don't think they've recognized that. Yeah, yeah. Um... I, I yeah I, I do think that Nick there's some talent there but the way that he has played this year and the system that he's been in and 
sometimes a fresh start is the best thing. I, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that it can't work at Penn State. There's going to be a new OC coming in, maybe a new philosophy. I don't know. It doesn't really matter if they don't find some wideouts anyway here at this school. Uh, who the OC is, because I just don't think you can. You can only do so much scheming, man. When you have no one on, a, you have no one outside that scares anyone. And when you can't go vertical, when you can't go vertical and stretch the field vertically, your options are limited, and that's what you're getting at. I know with Prabula, if yeah. you have that now this year, why not use him? It doesn't mean that we're gonna start him next year. It just means we're we're using you right now with this material. It's a meaningless final game, a meaningless bowl game. Yep. Let's experiment with this. It's good for everybody. We know what Drew Aller can do with this material. <laughs> There's no mystery. Yep. We don't need to be using him in A-gap keepers anymore. The, the, the problem with Aller in this offense, with what has been a, a read option coach, read option guys all through here, is that he's a pro-style pocket passer. And he shouldn't be running A-gap keepers ever, ever. And that's where he got hurt. But you need it in the offense. Why not use a guy who's absolutely willing to do it? And yeah. the, first, the first time he gets the ball on, I guess it was a B or C gap keeper, he goes 39 yards the very first time because Prabula has a burst running the ball. I mean, he's physical. He's yeah. not as big as Drew, but he's a lot more physical of a runner. He's still and, a pretty big kid, too. He is. He I'm is. sorry? He is. He's done a lot of work in the weight room since he's got there. He is. He. I think he might be 205, 210, yeah. something like that. 6'2", like two, six two, 210, something like that. He's big enough. Yeah. Uh, Michael Robinson was only that big. And Michael Robinson <laughs> was a handful when he got moving. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly how big Michael Robinson was, I think. 6'2", 215. So... Just for now, why not use him instead of this this whole thing? When I when I heard Franklin talking about both Singleton and Aller, I, I thought he's only trying to maintain their spirits and let them know you're our guys, so he yeah. can keep them, so he can keep them. Getting back to normal, he said with Drew. You know, as far yeah. as I was, yeah, normal. That's I don't know Is how normal? Normal about that, but yeah. Is normal good? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, before we get to Crying Ryan versus Shark Face, and I do want to get to that, I just for the Penn State fans that are that are listening or watching, I just hope they realize, you know, this this is the last game uh, you're going to see one of the best defenses Penn State's had uh, in the last 20, 25 years. Boy, what a waste! What they, I think of is what a waste, man. Have, they have some decisions to make. They're going to go in the draft, and there's a lot. I mean, there are going to be some young players that really, really um, emerge. Uh, I think in the bowl game, but also next year. But you know, Chop Robinson is, is one. Uh, Kalen King, I don't think he had the year he wanted to, but he's a good player. Adis Isaac, to me, um, if you look at a, I think he has done the most of anyone <coughs> this year to enhance. Yeah. Yes, yeah. at the next level. He's had an incredible year. Did you um, did you hear Greg Schiano? Yeah. Did you, did you hear Greg Schiano in the post game? Because I didn't see it actually. I didn't go over there after the game. I only saw it yesterday. Yeah. And somebody asked him why uh, forty three runs and only sixteen passes <laughs> <laughs> with Gavin Wimsett, and he and that's the real reason. But he said he said to the kid, he said, "Did you see those edge rushers?" <laughs> 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 and and it was the same thing Sharon Moore was thinking. Yeah. Like, why deal with it? Why subject JJ McCarthy to right. these guys when you don't have to, man? We, with that, with Penn State's offense, yeah. we don't have to. We're yeah. just gonna play smash mouth and possess the ball. And and that's what I think about when I see this defense. Yeah. The best defense we've seen since 05 here. Yes. Easily. Easily. And maybe. Maybe even better than that defense. I don't know. Certainly equal. I think that's legit. Um, in the conversation, for in the sure. Conversation. And, and the draft what, bear that out. What a waste it, that that this defense was wasted. When if they had one viable field stretching wideout, have you seen? Did you see the Michigan Maryland game? Did you watch any of that? I did not. I did not. Well. I'll tell you who the star was, you, so you don't have to watch it. As always, I watch these games, so you don't have to. Oh, my God. Thank powerful. you, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> it was it Caden Prather? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Caden Prather was a the one that got away. Oh my God. If they get Caden Prather, if the NIL money is ready and they yeah. can just pay the man when he's at West Virginia, then that changes the whole season here. I'm telling you, because he is a star. He is, I think he's the best. Other than Harrison at Ohio State, he's the best wide receiver in the Big Ten, and it ain't yeah. even close. Uh, it's it's Harrison here and this kid here. They're different kinds of receivers. Mm -hmm. But Caden Prather is dangerous. He yeah. he made a catch of, you know, Tonga Valoa. You know his story, and of course he blew the game again with some boneheaded. He, he's always he always they're in the game, and he makes these plays that just piss away points. He he's he always does this reverse pivot so that he's moving left and he's a right-handed quarterback and then he throws back against his body. This time they start at the 25 and he pivots, reverse pivots out of pressure and retreats like 12 yards. He's back at the 13-yard line and won't get rid of the ball. Tries to tries to throw some is is about ready to throw the pass and then tucks it under and he's going to run. And it gets poked away. Michigan, more the safety picks it up and walks in for a touchdown. Those are the things that kill you. And yeah. Maryland is in the game. They're in the game. They lose by seven points. Michigan got two safeties. You don't see that every day. You and your in, safeties. I love it. In one game. And it was basically, it, it, it's so maddening because Prather was dangerous in this game. He was he was terrific. You put Caden Prather on the field, and there was a pass that Tunga Valoa threw to him, which was just a missile. Yeah. Tunga Valoa can do the things I'm talking about and and do boneheaded stuff, but then he throws passes like his big brother sometimes, where they just go zoom, and this thing had smoke coming off of it, and Prather just leaps up like 30 yards downfield and snags this thing and doesn't even – miss a stride and and they dragged him down but it's like a 40 yard play and people are screaming and it's maryland they don't they just yeah. don't the place is almost packed for that michigan game i mean if they get one guy they had that guy and a different coordinator this could you're, you're talking about a college football playoff team that's yeah. how close they were because they're wasting that defense. I really, what I really wanted to see this year in at least one of those games, like probably not realistic in both of them, the Penn State, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan games. I wanted that. I wanted to see this defense play with a ten point lead in the yeah. second half. Yeah. And I, I wanted to see what would happen when they. Can you had imagine? The Can you imagine those guys cut loose on a third and eight with a ten point lead? When they put Chop in the middle, yeah. Isa and Denise, they have three defensive ends on the or, field. They never, that, they never got to the tipping point where they could they could win the game with their defense. Any game that Manny plays where he sends a corner blitz and, and runs a safety over for the hot route and, and guards that, anything they do like that, where the quarterback has to make a decision now and they're behind and they're under pressure. Yeah, they never got to that point. And there's so much – to be sad about about wasting this defense because they don't come around every day. No, they, they don't do come not. around every year, man. They do not. This no. is a, that was a special defense, and uh, like I said, like when you watch the next two or three drafts, but this one specifically, the talent that was on this team in a backup role or you know uh, as a starter, it's it's going to be quite a haul for Penn State, I would say, in the twenty twenty four. 2025 and 2026 drafts and just remember just remember what they did in these two games offensively and it's really going to be tough to take that'll make the penn state fans happy again when they see well, they're already thinking about it they're they're all, like, about when they it. see all these guys go high in the draft and then do well in the nfl and then... yeah. <laughs> they win the combine olympics they go high yeah. in the draft and makes everyone happy they go 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 here um dave let's get to hey i mean penn state fans are going to watch the game right uh, let's just make our Penn State pick, but then let's just get to. Uh, I know you wrote something on Penn Live about Ohio State, Michigan. Let's get to that before we uh, wrap this up. But just give me your score for uh, Penn State, Michigan. I'm going to go first this time. I do think Penn State's defense on a fast track, I mean, a fast track indoors, is going to be something to behold. Uh, and I think they're going to score at least once. I'm going to say this game feels like 34 to six to me, Penn State. Yeah, so I got 34 to 10. That's what I what I picked. And yeah, 
I mean, they're, they're that good. And I do think they know it's their last time at Penn State really probably playing. And I think the defense wants to play for each other. They want to play for their position coaches, and they want to play for Manny. And I do think they're going to be ferocious. Yeah, Caden Hauser, I, I like him as a quarterback, but he's still a redshirt freshman. He's a rookie, and he wasn't even supposed to be the quarterback. He's only played half a season. He hasn't seen a defense like this. No, no. Um, he, he did see Ohio State, so he, uh, that's wrong, actually. He, 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 he saw Ohio State, but um, – the kid, uh, I think is Noah Kim was the quarterback for half the season. So he really hasn't had the, the, the chops to deal with something like this. Mm -hmm. um, but do watch for Malik Carr. He's going to get a lot of targets and he is incredibly big and fast for a player you don't know about. Uh, he's, he's going to be, uh, you're going to see him. You're going to, you're going to see a lot of them, I but yeah, him. Penn state on a, on a, indoor surface like this is never anything you a defense like that never anything you want to deal with yeah. is he a little like antonio gates how's that for a reference no he's he's bigger and a little more uh antonio raw. Gates is almost a hall of famer borderline a little more raw than that he I was think. a basketball player that made gates is skilled yeah gates was like tony gonzalez in, in that way that that skilled as a basketball player skilled in general mm -hmm. uh, Carr is raw compared to those guys and he can drop balls. But when he gets a ball, you should have seen him just freight train this this Indiana safety that John that Mackey thought, style. That he was, oh, I don't even know what it he's he looks like Morris Stroud actually out there. Actually, he just looks huge. And then this <laughs> kid tried to score. <laughs> this Indiana safety thought he was gonna hit him and knock him down. And the kid he just bounced the kid back. It was like Oh my God! It was it was like uh, Aaron Pryor taking that punch from uh, in, the, in the middleweight Arguello. from Alexis Arguello in the light heavyweight uh, the light lightweight championship fight. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was as hard a punch as Arguello could throw, and Aaron Pryor was just kind of <laughs> all right. <laughs> it didn't even phase him. It was like that, and then he runs through three more guys to a yeah. touchdown. It was impressive. Dave, two things for you. Who do you go over or under twenty six in Nebraska, Iowa on Friday? <laughs> now and you gave me the line. Who wins Ohio State, Michigan, and why? You gave him. You gave me the line twenty six and a half. Yep. I just got off the phone it's with. High. I think it's high. I got off the phone after an hour with Tony Sinisi after you told me that just now. Our our <laughs> odds. Were like I cannot believe we set that line. <laughs> he coined the phrase the Ferentz line which is supposed to be 30 is the over under. And now we're going way under the Ferentz line, 26 and a half. It's uncharted waters for the Is Ferentz. it in honor of Brian Ferentz or Kirk? Oh, Brian, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony it coined it. Responsible he, for it though. It's, it's, it's supposed to be a takeoff on the Mendoza line. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, which was 40 years ago. I in, think it's going under. Well, they keep trying it. I said to you, I texted you, it's like a limbo stick. Yeah. They keep, the odds makers keep, keep lowering it yeah. and the betters keep going under it and the under keeps winning. The Iowa, Iowa under has won, I think, four straight times, right? And yeah. it's been crazy. It's I been it. below the Ferentz line every time. These teams can go low, baby. They can go low. <laughs> Whether it's limbo or this, they can go low. You tell me, Nebraska is capable, but it's I'll tell you, they were playing a kid named Jeff Sims before, yeah. and now they're they're playing Chubba Purdy, um, Purdy's Brock Purdy's little brother from um, Chubba Purdy. That's his name, and he's he's very skilled. He's better than anyone knows, and he's only now getting some run. And he can he can throw. He's he's a talented kid, and he's better. You know, they had they had a couple of guys. They had Heinrich. I must say Heinrich Himmler. Heinrich yeah. Himmler, the the yeah. kid, the 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 kid. He's the tight end. He looks like a giant robot who's constructing <laughs> robocops out there running. <laughs> well, the you know, he was like a blast from the past, like Jerry Taggy, those old option quarterbacks at Nebraska from the early seventies. And they'd been playing him because Jeff Sims, the the kid yeah. that, that got as a transfer from Georgia Tech, just cannot yeah. throw the ball. And so now Purdy is playing, and he is a, a substantial upgrade. So I will take the over. I think he can score 16 points on Iowa, and they they lose, of course, at the end because that's what Nebraska does. I'll they say they beat him last year. 
19 to 16, uh, Iowa. All right, now, get, now let's get to the let's get to the heavyweight fight. Let's go. Give me give me the score. Why? I'm picking Ohio State because I told you I think Henderson. And, and again, they're a dog. Last I saw, they're a three and a half point dog, right? Yeah. I don't think as these venues go, I don't think the big hole in the ground is as hard a place to play as the horseshoe. As far as for, for the road team, it's still you're you're on the road in the Big Ten, which is always hard. But I think Ohio State has the two best players on the field. Uh, Marvin Harrison is the yeah. obvious one. The not so obvious one yeah. is Trevion Henderson, who all of a sudden, you know, he was injured for like a month after he got uh, hit in the ribs in the Notre Dame game. And for running backs, it's yeah. very useful when you keep your legs fresh and you yeah. just get a rest in the middle of the season. He didn't play for a month. Uh and he he didn't come back until the Wisconsin game uh, first week of November, I think. He mm -hmm. looks like a rocket out there. He looks like he did when he was a freshman. Yeah. And I think he's going to make a difference. I didn't see a a fearsome Michigan defense against Maryland. And I know it's the week before and no one's playing. Yeah. No one's really – their heads are not in the game. I just did not see – a defense to be feared like I think we've seen in the past couple of years from Michigan. So I'm going with Ohio State. Uh, I haven't even thought about a score, but but they're yeah. going to – I think they're going to not only cover the three and a half, but win outright. Yeah. And, and that will be the third. If it happens, I will have picked the last three as outright dog winners. Um, that's right. But, but I picked Michigan as a seven-point dog and as an eight yeah. dog the last two years, yeah. especially last year, everyone's saying they can't win in the horseshoe. They can't win. And, you know, you saw what happened. It was yeah. 45, Stealing 23. Signs happened. Happened. Stealing wasn't signs even happened, close. Dave. Wasn't even close. Stealing signs happened, Dave. Stealing huh? signs. Stealing signs happened, Dave. Yeah, um, well. <laughs> um, I just... think there's that. I think karma can come back. Yeah. On At some point, it has to come back on Michigan, doesn't it? Doesn't I'm little, it? I'm a little disappointed that, Ryan and, and Jim won't have a chance to exchange forearm shivers instead of handshakes. <laughs> Orvah is so strange in a good way. I like the fact that he's strange. Did, did, you, did you see what he said? He was asked about his respect for Ryan Day. No, I didn't get it. I was, just, I, was, I was trying to get caught up. And I know that Dan Dakich came over the top with like a, all the stuff that, that Arvos pulled. Uh, uh, as, as, as like a response, but I don't know what he said about, he didn't say born on third base again, did you know, he? You know how weird he is? He tries to make little jokes that yeah. nobody gets. <laughs> and he, he didn't want to say anything about day per se, but he said, he like answered a question that nobody asked. And he said, uh, the, the, the days, the weeks, the months, the, see that he said day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I think we're spending those uh, just worrying about ourselves and our game plan and, and game planning for Ohio State. That was supposed to be a joke. In Jim Harbaugh's world, that play on words is a joke. <laughs> he, he's just a weird guy. He's a strange guy. Yeah. All right. You got Ohio State as the dog winning in that game for the third year in a row. Penn State big. <laughs> Penn State big. And then we will see. It's going to be a busy it's December is almost busier than a regular season month between the portal, you know, now there's an OC, there's an OC that's going to get hired and the bowl and all that stuff. And then so, the college football playoff, uh, who's going to get in that. Yeah. Too bad that the Florida state quarterback got hurt, but I don't know that they were ever going to be quite on the level of some of the other teams in the, in the hunt. 